So the first time Brandon and I traveled the country, it was in his leased Nissan Sentra. Second time around, we wanted a bit more space, and so we decided to build our very own DIY homemade truck camper. I distinctly remember sitting in the bed with Brandon after we came up with the idea to build a truck camper, having no idea where to start. We had no clue what we wanted it to look like. We didn't even know the first piece to cut and place. But we decided to just give it a shot and go piece by piece anyway. And so one night we went to Lowe's and we bought up some 2x4s, 2x6s, whatever we thought we might need, uh, sketched a very, very rough plan on a sheet of paper in the studio and got started. And we ended up building the entire frame in one night. And it was just kind of one of those things where if we didn't start it that night and if we didn't get the entire frame done, it wasn't going to kind of get the ball rolling the way that we needed it to. Now, I forgot to mention that we started this on May 20th, I want to say, and we were leaving on June 10th because June 10th was the day that we left on our first cross-country road trip, and so it kind of had meaning to us, and we wanted... And so we wanted to leave on June 10th again this next time around and kind of make it a bit of a tradition. So we had a bit of a realization. We were so caught up with orders and building tables that we didn't realize how quickly the month of May was going by. And around May 20th, we had this realization where we were like, wow, we have 20 days to conceptualize and build an entire truck camper and prep for another road trip. So... We built the entire frame in one night, piece by piece. We would just kind of build a section and then walk it out down the hallway, outside to the truck, dry fit it, make sure it fit, and kind of conceptualize the shape as we went, uh, where we wanted the windows to go, what the door was going to look like. And by the end of the night, I think it was probably well into the early morning at that point, maybe 2 or 3 a.m., we took the entire frame put it on dollies, wheeled it down the hallway as far as we could go, but it was too tall to fit through the doorway. So now Brandon and I are on either side, just like shimmying it to the door that leads outside, propped it up onto the tailgate, and we got it up onto the back of the truck bed. And once we saw that for the first time, that was when it really started to feel real because we had a skeleton now. We saw the shape of it, and we were really able to kind of start envisioning what it was going to look like. So there was a lot to learn throughout this process. There was a lot of trial and error. And even looking back, there were a lot of things that we would do differently if we were to do it again. But we did what we could with what we knew. We used half-inch plywood for the inside. We did kind of like exposed beams on the inside, just stained two-by-fours because we thought it looked really cool. Um, we added some really fun trim detail, which was a lot of fun for me. Um, couple that looked like mountains. We did little 45s around the windows and the doorway, so that was really fun. Um, and then for the outside, the outside is probably <laughs> one of the, it was one of the most difficult parts to tackle and one of the funniest topics to revisit anytime I think about building this truck camper. We initially wanted to go for like that old school camper corrugated metal type of vibe, uh, but no Home Depot, no Lowe's, nowhere near us had that available. This was also in 2021, like April, May, I guess May of 2021. And so COVID was still, you were kind of still feeling the effects of that. Um, order times and turnaround times for things like that, if you were to order them custom, were way Way too long for the time frame that we had and so we were really limited to what was available to us and so instead they had this sort of like plastic fiber I think maybe PVC type of corrugated siding I think people use it for like the roofs of greenhouses and things like that but we figured you know what okay this is close enough we can probably make it work. So we bought up a ton of sheets of that, thinking that this was gonna be the exterior of our camper and that it was gonna look sick. Now, we bought white because they had clear, just like completely transparent, white and I think black, and we didn't wanna go with black and we figured we could do white and then we could paint it to give it like that vintage look that we were going for. So we covered the entire camper 
in this siding. And once we got to the trim, we had no idea how to trim it out because the divots were pretty deep in this, probably at least an inch deep. So all of the corners we had to try to fill with something. We tried to stuff it with like cut up pool noodles. We had like this kind of malleable metal trim that we were putting along the corners because that was the only thing that we could find. And we were just about done. I mean, we had the roof done, the sides done, all of like the front angles. And Brandon and I kind of looked at each other as we were like stuffing pool noodles in the corners, just like, how do you feel about this? And neither of us liked it. And, and I think we both kind of envisioned being on the road and just having to stare at this thing every single day in all of these beautiful places. And one, I don't think it was very practical. I don't think it would have held up well. But two, it was just visually an eyesore. And so we both made the decision to just accept the fact that we were going to trash all of this. We spent a lot of time on it, and that time has come and gone, but it's okay because it'll be worth it in the end. And we just decided to completely rip it all off and start over. And that was a difficult decision to make, but I think Brandon and I being on the same page and kind of agreeing to just laugh about it was the absolute best thing that we could have done. And there's a clip that I'm going to put in this video that I feel like absolutely perfectly describes that moment. What are you doing? Taking off this fucking garbage that we put on here for some reason. Oh, take more pieces. <laughs> So once we decided to trash that siding, we realized, listen, we're woodworkers. We might as well stick to what we know. So we had a bunch of two by sixes, or actually two by eights, I think they were, that we might have cut down to like seven inches wide, um, laying around on our wood rack. And these were kind of like recycled. They had been used on a project earlier, and um, we just kind of had them sitting there for a rainy day. Today was that rainy day. So we decided to try to save on costs since we already bought up enough siding to cover the entire camper. We didn't want to do it a second time. And so we proceeded to cut down these two by sixes or two by eights, Jesus, two by sevens, I guess at that point, down to about a quarter inch thick and to use that as siding. He was like, we're, we know what we're doing. We're going to work with wood. Now, the really difficult part about this was that our table saw only cuts to three and a quarter inches. That's the, the maximum height of our blade. So we had to cut each piece down to six inches, or I guess six and a half, run it through once, flip it over, run it through a second time so that we could get the quarter inch kind of like full width of the piece. Now, the unit, the storage unit that we were renting, I don't think it was meant for a wood shop. It, it didn't have enough power for running Doug fir two by sixes through a table saw like eight feet long. And so I kid you not, every single cut we made, the, the fuse blew, the power went out. And so it got to the point, we had a skateboard laying around the studio for the longest time. And so the power would go off, Brandon would go out to the hallway, ride the skateboard down the hallway, around the corner to the fuse box, switch the power back on, come back, make another cut, probably not even get all the way through, have to go back. And at this point, we had been up for like 20 hours. You know, we were pulling all-nighters or at least kind of like 20-hour days pretty consistently during this time because we just had such a tight time frame that we were trying to work within. And so we were so exhausted. And the amount of extra time that having to go to the fuse box like every single time added was just absurd. And I remember feeling so incredibly exhausted just in the middle of doing all of this. But... We kept going, we got it done, we cut the pieces down, we staggered the seams, we ended up staining and painting it to do like a two-tone kind of design to match the truck. And at the end of it, after trimming it all out, we were absolutely thrilled with the way that it came out. And we felt like it was really representative of who we are and, and kind of where we were at that time in our lives. So that was kind of like the first escapade in terms of the truck camper. The next thing I would say that I really kind of think of was uh, once we finished the siding, uh, we were just kind of like trimming it out and, and filling some of the corners, just like finishing the exterior. We weren't quite done 
but we were getting there. And it was about 7 o'clock in the morning, and this guy who uh, worked in the warehouse alongside of us, he had a furniture business, he came over to us. And, and one of the really cool parts about doing this whole truck camper build, especially in that space, was that that was when a lot of our relationships with the other tenants really started to kind of like form and develop because they saw us working on this really ambitious project, and they were always curious to see like our progress and what our plans were and how we were doing. And so I think the same rang true for for this guy. And so he comes in, and when we had just decided, after kind of being there all night from the day before, like, okay, I think we're going to go home, we're going to take a little bit of a nap, maybe have something to eat, and then come back and we'll keep going. Now, he's just coming into the to work for the day at 7 o'clock, and he's like, all right, how are we getting this thing on? And now Brandon and I look at each other, and we are absolutely exhausted. But we knew that there was no way that we were going to be able to get this thing out of the studio and onto the truck without his help. And so we were like, it's now or never. So we had built the entire thing on a pair of sawhorses that we built. And we managed to get our nine-foot work table out of the door of the studio. We then transferred it from the sawhorses to the work table, the and I kid you not, there was maybe a foot of clearance between the width of the truck camper and the width of the hallway. And so we roll this thing down the hallway, around the corner, and outside. Now Brandon backs the truck up, and we are ready to go. Now the only question that was left was how were we going to actually lift it into the truck bed? Luckily for us, our neighbor at the studio, John, who had been warehousing furniture for 25 years at that point, he had a forklift and he knew how to use it. Do me a hey. favor, I'm trying to load a camera on that back of the pickup. If you pull me back in about 20 minutes and a half hour, I think I'll be able and then we can talk, right? He proceeded to lift up this entire truck camper on a forklift and then Brandon back. Now I'm saying this and it seems so simple and straightforward, but I cannot even describe to you how like high pressure this was, especially being so exhausted. Brandon backs the truck up and this thing fit perfectly, not even with an inch to spare. I don't know why we didn't give ourselves just a little bit more clearance, um, but then it was in and it was in and, and looked amazing and we were finally getting closer to actually being done. The only downside of this was that now any of the other work that we had to do, we had to do it outside. Which brings me to this next part of the story. So once the siding was on, we still had to add a little bit of detail. I wanted to paint some trees along the side. We threw the path logo up on there. And we also had to seal it because it was all wood. So after the truck camper is on there, we show back up to the studio and we start doing all the detail work. I, for whatever reason, it was June, I decided to wear a long sleeve black shirt and I got super hot right away. So I decided to take my shirt off and I was wearing nothing but a sports bra. That was mistake number one. I proceed to stay outside all day. I'm up and down on a ladder on all sides of the camper, just painting my little trees, you know, channeling my inner Bob Ross. We go inside at the end of the day. And it always happens like this, even like when you're at the beach, you don't realize the sunburn that you got until you're like in the bathroom after you've gotten home. And I just like looked at myself in the mirror and Brandon saw and he was like, oh my God, I had the palest outline of my sports bra on my back. I was beet red. It was awful. And so I had that tan line for the entire road trip. There are like photos of me in like a dress or a tank top or whatever. And you just see like the outline of this sports bra. It was so painful and awful. So put my shirt back on and we head back outside and now it's, it's time to seal it. And so we buy this giant thing of deck sealer and we're just going to throw it on there. We cover the entire camper in it. And then all of a sudden it starts to get dark out. Now it hadn't rained in weeks leading up to this. And we look at the weather and it's like a severe thunderstorm warning. So we did our best to kind of like back the truck up into, there was this little awning sort of covered section outside of the studio. It wasn't really like a parking spot or anything like that, but we did our best to get as much of the camper under there as we possibly could. I tried to like tape up some drop cloths around it too to just cover it as much as I could. And then we just kind of sat and we watched the sky get darker and darker and literally just the front roll in. And then before you knew it, it started downpouring. Oh! Oh man, oh the back is getting just pounded. Like a proper summer thunderstorm, just like monsoon. And on the deck sealer, it's like 
do not get wet for at least 24 hours. And we had probably just finished applying it within the hour, maybe two hours. And so we were really worried that it just wasn't going to hold up well. Luckily, it made it through the road trip completely fine. But in the moment, we had no idea how it was going to do. And it was really kind of dejecting to just watch. And I felt so powerless not being able to kind of pull into anywhere that was completely covered and keep it dry. So as we're standing there in just complete disbelief that like all of the work we had just done might very well be for nothing, one of the guys who works in the warehouse came out and, and he was like, hey, uh, have you guys been inside? And we were like, no. And he just shakes his head and he goes, bad, bad, bad. He goes, it's raining. Now, the building had flooded before when it rained, but it was always on the ground. The toilets would flood, the bathrooms would flood, things would overflow, and so the, the floor would be wet. That was one thing. We had, we had kind of been used to that. We come inside this time, and one of the pipes that was w running along the ceiling had burst. And so now it was quite literally raining down inside. And just back to back, like blows to this whole project. And so now this day, we were supposed to seal the outside of the camper. And then when we came back inside, we were going to build the interior, which we were keeping super simple. It was just plywood, um, two like storage cabinets on either side, and then a piece of plywood that slid in the middle to make it into a bed. So not too difficult. But now we were stuck for the next two hours in the hallway, mopping up water, sweeping it outside with a shop vac, just trying to keep everything as dry as possible. We were supposed to go home and have dinner with our family so that we could kind of like say goodbye, have a little send off, but instead we're soaking wet, our shoes are ruined, and it was just like flood V2. So it was an exhausting day. We did manage to get the inside done after a few modifications that I think we overlooked because we were just so mentally burnt out at that point. We worked up until the last possible minute. We finished up working <laughs> at 4 a.m. the night before. We fit our cooler in for the very first time that night, and somehow it fit perfectly with no room to spare we didn't even think to measure it beforehand and then we left at 7 a.m that next morning on june 10th for our second cross-country road trip <laughs> <laughs>